welcome back or welcome home my name is Desiree and it is so so nice to have you here we're doing something slightly different than what I would normally do this is gonna be a reading vlog but it's gonna be a special reading vlog whenever I do like read with me videos I typically just like record myself reading and that's it but I don't think I've ever made one of these videos where I actually finish oh no maybe I have I probably have with destroy me didn't I okay maybe this isn't all that different but anyways we're gonna be finishing fourth wing together today hello my little raindrops this is desiree from the future coming in to give you a little spoiler warning disclaimer because this is a video of me finishing the book there will obviously be a lot of my reactions and those will be reactions to the end of the book so potential spoilers i just wanted to let you know so that you don't watch this thinking oh there won't be any spoilers there probably will i don't say them word for word but you will see in my face what's going on. So I just wanted to let you know so that you are aware of what you're getting yourself into. If you haven't read the book, I recommend just maybe saving this video for once you have finished it. But if you do want the spoilers or have read the book, then, well, feel free to keep watching. And I'm also going to be giving a final review slash my overall thoughts by the end of this video and it's just been so fun talking with everyone on the club about like what we're thinking our theories how we're feeling about the characters if you know you know i'm currently at on 456 and there are 498 pages in this book which means i have 42 pages left that should take me approximately an hour since i'll be annotating everything bowie is joining us today He's gonna be our reading buddy. Okay, so, got my book, have my annotating supplies, I have my trusty lap desk. If you're an annotator that does not necessarily like to sit down at a desk to read and prefer to like, I don't know, lie on the couch or sit outside or read in bed, invest in one of these because it's a lap desk. You can make sure you're, like it's, it's great. Alrighty, let's do this. Someone's obviously gonna die. I just don't know who. They told you dragon fire doesn't work. I'm, 
I'm sweating. Waterproof mascara. <laughs> okay, so this isn't normal. I don't usually cry like this when I'm reading.
They have 24 pages left. 24. actually take a break because I can't breathe right so I will be back in a short time. okay I had to actually take a break because I physically did not feel okay like you ever cry so much that it just makes you feel absolutely disgusting that that's kind of where I was and try eating something because that probably the fact that I haven't eaten since this morning probably doesn't help. How cute are these oranges? Sorry, mandarins. The last time I read a book that had me like crying this hard was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which I read in April. How am I gonna be able to read anything else after this? Okay, we got this. anymore. No, please. What the heck? Miss Thing, don't you dare. Why would you do that? Why? Oh my god. That was dumb of you. That, why? Oh my god. I'm pissed. I swear to god, she died. He loves her so much. <gasps> Ten pages. Ten pages. The last chapter is in Zayden's point of view. That can't be good, can it? But no, it can, because th there's a second book. <sighs> Rebecca really knew what she was doing with this chapter. Oh my god. Giving District 13. And that is giving from Blood and Ash. Last page. Oh my. Okay, I can't. I... I don't want to see. We're gonna block the bottom of the page as I read because I, can, I can't, I can't see. I do not want to see any spoilers. No spoilers for me. Mm-mm. God. Oh my god! Alright, let's talk. I, I don't even know where to start. Obviously, Infinity Stars. 
I book talk was not lying. Fourth Wing combines all of our favorite dystopian fantasy classics. It combines The Hunger Games, Divergent, and a little bit of From Blood and Ash, and some of the banter from more contemporary rom-coms, kind of like... There are, there are a few parts that reminded me of The Love Hypothesis, there are a few parts that reminded me of so many different works, and it's just a bunch of these combined into one book, but add Rebecca's own twist to it. What I'm about to say, please don't read it in the wrong way, but this is not the most original piece there is, if that makes any sense. Like, if you want a really good dragon story, you should read Aragon, right? That is one of the biggest OGs there are out there. But combining the concept of Divergent with the whole dragon thing from Aragon and adding a little hint of like the Hunger Games to it, it's a, it's, it's a bunch of original works combined into one. It's done exceptionally well. And so while this might not be the most original piece out there, the way that it combines all of those OG works is just, it's addictive. I haven't read anything by Rebecca Yaros before this one. I do know that she's written a lot of contemporary romance that I do plan on reading now that I've read this. But in the case of Fourth Wing, the writing is not poetic. You know, like it's not, it's not super, super deep. For me, at least, I didn't, of course there are some parts that were very deep, but this is not like a literary masterpiece, if that makes sense. The writing is very basic and easy to follow, and I would say that it's written with the kind of ease that YA books are written, but just add more adult, mature content to it. So this is kind of like a YA book, but with mature content and more depth. If we look past that kind of analysis, like this doesn't stop the fact that I rate this infinity stars. Obviously, I'm the kind of reader that I, I really do pay a lot of attention to the writing itself. I say this often, and again, while the writing in here was not spectacular, like the writing in The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue was to me, keep in mind, everything I'm saying right now is personally for me. So the writing and the prose in The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue or Normal People by Sally Rooney or those kinds of books, this is not it. This is super easy. It's simple. The world building, though, does get more intricate. There's new information in almost every single line. That, that's why I'm saying that it's kind of like a YA, but with a few elements of adult fantasy. Of course, this is still considered an adult fantasy because of the mature content in here, but I do think it made me enjoy it more just because I wasn't really in a fantasy like mood or a fantasy mindset. And so that means that for me, reading fantasy was a little tricky for me. So I couldn't have started reading a fantasy that was like a lot of world building, a lot of character building and intricate writing, right? Like that would have been just too much information for my brain and it would have shut off and I would have DNF'd the book. But because this has such simple writing with so much world building and so much character development and just so much information coming in left and right, up and down, because the writing was simple, it was easy for me to just kind of keep going with it. Now I will say, the first few chapters, I did doubt, I doubted. Like, I, I was reading and I thought, like, did book talk lie to me? Because I don't know what I'm thinking about this book, but it's not necessarily spectacular. And yes, the beginning did, like, get me invested, but I, I, I do think that it was, the, like, the mind space, the mindset that I had when I went into this book, I was just, like, maybe being a bit too judgy because this is such a famous book. I have that I have the tendency to do that. When I know a book is like book talk famous, I'll go into it being very judgy. And um, that's why I usually stay away from book talk famous books for a little while. I waited like two years to read Akatar just because 
it was so famous on TikTok and I, I knew that if I went into it, I would be pretty judgmental of it just to see like, is this actually worth all the hype? Would overnet analyze everything? So I think that's kind of where I was at the beginning of this book, just because this is so recently booktop famous. But after a while, I just, I could not put it down. This book consumed me body and soul. And I do say this often with books that I really, really liked. <laughs> This was, it was so good. It brought back all the amazing memories that I have of reading and watching The Hunger Games or Divergent and even a little bit of Maze Runner and How to Train Your Dragon and Aragon. Gosh, I love Aragon. As well as Merlin, the TV series, one of my absolute favorite. Uh, the relationship that Merlin has with the dragon just reminds me so, so much of Taren. And I have no idea if that's how you pronounce his name. Tern? Tear? Tern? Tern? I don't know. It was so good. It's definitely one of my favorites. I would reread it without a second thought. It was, it just, because there was so much information, like I, I was hooked the entire time minus like that little, like that beginning where I was just being kind of like, where I just was not in the right mindset for it and then I eventually got into the mind the right mindset for it as I kept reading. I will probably go into like a more of in-depth review in my reading like my monthly reading wrap up. But if you're a fan of like all the dystopian classics like Hunger Games, Divergent, uh, Maze Runner, if you like How to Train Your Dragon, if you like dragons in general, if you like Aragon, this is really really good and I would say though, it's been a really long time since I read Aragon, so I can't, I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna say this with like, believe everything I say, but I would say that if you want a really spectacular dragon story, I would read Aragon for that. If you're looking for a fantasy that's gonna keep your mind closed off to the real world and be completely submerged into the story, and have some dragon elements to it and you know like have some thrill into it give this one a shot too yeah i think that's all i'm gonna say for this one you can tell well you can't really see all that well because of oh no let me make it a little bit tighter all the tabs so many tabs this was a really good book could it have been even better absolutely but for this time reading this book, for me, it was perfect. It was perfect without actually being perfect. That was that for the video. I hope you enjoyed watching me sob my eyes out. All right, I'm gonna go try and write my review while everything is still fresh in my mind. And that's gonna be that. Thank you so much for taking some time in your day to watch my content. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to leave a thumbs up and I will also have the links to my annotating supplies as well as the tabs and my substack in the description with all of my other links if you want to take a look at that. And if you would like to join the Little Raindrops family and you have not yet, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. I post every single Monday. Content varies from bookish content to vlogs to just so many various things. This is a digital diary basically. so. But with that, I will get going. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.